What's up, guys? It's uh, Joseph Abraham, uh, the creator of Familia, the indie RPG. This is my first devlog. I am going to be showing you some of my parallax uh, mapping techniques for RPG Maker and Photoshop. I use the Galves plugin, the Galves Layer Graphics plugin, so I'll talk a little bit more about that and I'm going to be working on an RTP map. I, I use RTP maps, but um, let's just go ahead and start this video and see what, see, uh, see what we got. Okay, so I had to erase the beginning of the video actually because I recorded it incorrectly. YouTube fails. I'm learning. First devlog, so don't hate on me. So the first thing I'm doing is I already had filled in the shading earlier. Uh, that was off video because, like I said, I broke it. And then I was adding some bricks, some brick patterns to the upper layer to kind of give it a depth to make you feel like there's something up there, you know, to make you feel like. Uh, the world is wider and more vast than um, you can even see as a player. Um, so what I was doing right there is I was grabbing textures and, and making textures and I was using the RTP tiles and actually catching patterns. If, you, if you're in Photoshop and you go to edit define pattern, you can actually create patterns and then you can just kind of draw with them over a different thing. So here you see I was kind of erasing cracks. What I found when I tested the game is that people tend to think they should be able to walk into the cracks. And I felt that that was a little bit distracting towards the direction I wanted the player to take. So I just kind of erased the cracks with some bricks. Again, it's strange to have bricks because it's supposed to be like a wild cave, but I guess Sometimes when you're making art for a game, you actually change the lore of the game because of the way you want to make the art. You know, because so you actually make something that's cool, and then you decide later to, you know, make, you know, say you make a guy and you give him four extra arms, and then later it develops into like there's a whole race with four arms. So art is very much effective of the lore, and I find especially if you're a solo dev, a small company, you kind of have to be adaptable and just to make the best version of what you can do with the limited and finite amount of resources that you have. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking a plant, like a vine texture, and I'm overlaying it over the walls to kind of make it look like there's some overgrowth in here. You know, I was kind of concerned that I might, um, it might not make sense because this cave is so freaking dark. I, I've been in like a cave where it never sees sunlight and there's no plants in there. But you know what? It's an RPG and it's a 90s style, so it's not about logic. Maybe in this world, you know, plants don't need as much light as they do in the real life Earth world. So I just kind of let it go because I think it looks cool. So here I'm grabbing an asset from a different map. This is actually something I decided against doing from this point. I was previously using a different um, parallaxing plugin and I decided to not use the, the one I was previously using and I switched to Galves and it's been so much better. Galves is such a superior plugin. I'll leave a plugin for Galves Layer Graphics or um, a link to the plugin in the description below after I upload this video. Uh, there's a quick fight there. I didn't totally disable fights. I just made them <coughs> rare and you can see me going back and making sure that the transition is clean. A lot of times when you're doing parallax mapping, you can actually get a lot of glitches if everything doesn't load when it's supposed to, and it can kind of load in a in a manner that is really glitchy, so you gotta kind of walk in and out of your map to make sure that you're not getting that type of issue and that it's smooth and pro. Here I decided to add some stairs. Um, I don't have any treasures in this particular map yet. Well, I do, but they're, they're not finalized, so I decided to add some more layers to kind of give it a little bit more depth. Um, again, with stairs, just like the plants, if it was just like a, a cave that no one's been to before, I don't think there would be stairs in there, but maybe, you know, maybe it was an ancient civilization or something. Who knows, right? So I can always kind of expand on the lore later. But I like the idea of having stairs because it kind of increases the amount of, of depth that the player feels when they're in there and they feel that it has a little bit more of an exploratory vibe. The same goes even though I decorate areas you can't really see, um, well you can see but you can't actually go to, 
it kind of gives that player a feeling that um, there's more out there, even beyond what they can explore, so it gives this vastness to the world that I think is very important in an RPG. So here I was trying to make a bridge <laughs> uh, between the two like top areas, and I actually gave up and decided not to do the bridge. Here I'm looking up some stuff, you know, how to make a bridge, yada yada yada, I watched this video. I'll probably fast forward past this part, in fact, let's just skip this, because I decided not to make the bridge, so it's somewhat irrelevant. Okay, so here we are back at me testing the map after I'd given up on the bridge. You can see what the the map kind of looks like. It's uh, it's like just a transparent PNG. And at this point I actually have a lot more plants and I'm starting to add more um, what you would call doodads. I'm not using a doodad plugin, I'm just overlaying it right onto the parallax. Uh, you would use a doodad plugin specifically when you want the maps to animate, like for example if you have a tree and you want there to be wind blowing on the tree, um, you would use a doodad effect with fire. Fire is a great example of what you would use a doodad for. Uh, I'm not using it on this particular map since it's a cave, it's very still, so there's no need for anything like that. Uh, what was I doing here? I was checking my friend's stream after uh, he was doing a 24 hour stream after I was gonna, that I was gonna go support after I finished this this map, my friend CZ Gaming 10. So I saw that he's not done. Um, a bunch of people were accumulating in my Twitch channel because I was actually streaming this on Twitch, which I'll leave a link below if you want to check that out. If you want to get a more in-depth version or you want to ask me questions as I'm making stuff, I, I stream every night at 10 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time. Um, that's uh, that's uh, 2 a.m. Pacific Standard Time or uh, Eastern Standard Time if you want to if you're on the mainland and you want to check out what I'm doing. I'm sorry it's so late, but that's how it goes. That's why I make these YouTube videos. So here I'm just adding more plants, adding more plants, adding more shadows. Since you can't go up to certain areas, it's okay to make them kind of perma-dark. More leaves. You know, I, uh, so for these I don't actually use the pattern tool. I just straight up um, use, the, use the selector or the lasso and I grab them and then I just paste them right in. Um, I don't know what I'm doing here, probably messaging someone. So here I'm doing more doodads. Well, they're not technically doodads, they're part of the parallax. I don't know, however you want to think about it. I'm adding some mushrooms. The only plant that actually kind of makes sense would be in such a dark cave, you know? And I, I think at this point I'm pretty close. You can tell when I stop moving the screen around so much. I'm kind of like, eh, it looks pretty good. Am I like overdoing it by adding too much? Um, checking my friend's stream again, he's not online yet, so I'm like, okay, back to the grindstone. Uh, yeah, okay, oh, so this is cool. So what I'm doing here is I'm making a, um, like, the light from the outside, so at the edge of the cave, you know, I feel that feeling like there's, like, this blinding light that, uh, is so bright, it's, like, blinding, so I'm creating that effect when you walk out of the cave. I, I initially made a really hard line and then I decided to go with kind of a fade, which I think works. If you look at it, it came out pretty good. So you can kind of see how that looks. And then I, so for this other room, um, the fire is a little bit more orange. Well, the light is orange because it's from torch fire. So the sunlight is yellow and the torch fire is kind of red and that's just kind of a cool effect that you can do. And then I'm going to layer that on top of the existing map on a separate image. The image looks kind of like that. I decided actually to take the shadows out at a later time and just do the light by itself because with the light I do additive um, blending mode, which means uh, with an additive blend it, it actually increases the light so it just makes it brighter and there's also a couple others that, that you have access to right in RPG Maker like Multiply, Screen, and um, Exclusion maybe? I don't know. Something like that. But you can see the effect is pretty brilliant. Um, kind of testing the map, walking around, making sure it's not too broken, making sure I can walk everywhere. See right there, I noticed an issue with a hard line, which means I, I cut something off and then I changed the map and then didn't remember to switch it back to match. So um, I made a note probably right there, that's why the screen stopped to, to go and fix that at a later point. 
Um, so it looks good. You can tell the sun looks really cool when you walk through. It looks like he's like blinding, which is totally realistic because if you've ever been in a really dark cave, when you first get out, it's like you can't even see it's so bright if you're walking into sunlight. And that's exactly the effect I was going for, and I'm really glad it came out. Um, for those of you who care, I used an animation for a spell to kind of get this light effect. It doesn't actually move that fast, so it's a little bit less uh, intense. It's kind of more in the background when you're doing it. So it works in the context of the actual game, but when it's sped up, it might seem a little bit weird. So I just kind of check some stuff. Um, yeah, see what it feels like when I go outside to go inside. This is all just, you know, testing. So far everything's going pretty well. I think I decided here to move the shadow onto the other layer, uh, which is what I was talking about. So you can see right there, that's what it looks like, basically, the images. There's actually two images in there, the door lights and then everything else are separate layers. So you, so yeah, you can see I switched to it real quick. And then I'm going to go through and fix this little error that I was talking about earlier. Um, kind of figuring out how to do that. I think I just erased around it so it just the, so it blends a little bit better. <clears throat> and so now I'm saving it. I'm saving the bottom layer first, which is this one right here. Sorry, my drapes. And now I'm saving the light layer, which is the... Because they need to be... Uh, they have different properties. One is just a straight up uh, overlay, and the other is an additive image. So, uh, not to go too deeply into blending, they're like different types, so. If you have questions about any of this, make sure to hit me up in the comments. Um, if you want to do like a tutorial or something, uh, let me know. So that concludes our video. I really appreciate you watching. I had a blast making it. And if you want more stuff like this, or if you have any specific questions about what I'm doing, make sure to hit me up on Twitter, or on the comments of this video. Again, I'll leave a bunch of links down below for you. And I hope you learned something in my devlog. I will probably be posting more of these. So let me know if you have any specific questions. And it's been a blast. Check you guys later. Aloha. Bye-bye.